Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob, and in today's video, we're gonna take a deeper dive into a more complex shortcuts workflow. We're gonna take a look at calling into third-party APIs. We'll take a deep dive into breaking our shortcut up into smaller reusable shortcuts, and then we're gonna see a brand new app called Toolbox Pro, which has been designed specifically to work with the shortcuts app. Let's go. So let me first start by showing you the shortcut we're gonna to build today. This is quite a complex little workflow, so I think it helps just to see what it is we're building. So here I am in shortcuts, and I have this PDF Maker shortcut here in green, and you can see it says it has 22 actions, but it also depends on all these other shortcuts here off to the right. So this is quite a complex workflow. But let's click on it and see what happens. So the first thing that happens is I'm prompted to select uh, a photograph. So I'm gonna choose this photograph of my daughter. Uh, then it takes quite a long time to run because what we're doing here is constructing a PDF with that photograph, with a color swatch made up of the colors of that photograph, and with the lat long from that photograph as the title. We're then using a third-party API called Cloud Convert to actually turn this into a PDF. Now, if you saw last week's video, you'll see that you can make PDFs directly on the iPad but you don't have a lot of control over the orientation, the page size and things like that. By using Cloud Convert, you can fully control what page size you want, what orientation you want. In fact, you actually have access to the full rendering engine of the Chrome web browser when making your PDF. Let's take a look at the result. So here you can see the resulting PDF. We have the lat long at the top, we have the color palette that was extracted from this image, and then we have the image itself. And this is one landscape page. And if I press the share sheet option here, and then scroll down, I can select any app I want for this. I'm gonna open this up in PDF Expert. And there we go, we have a, a full PDF made from various different components. So I'm gonna approach this shortcut in four sections. One section to get the lat long title text, another section to get the color swatches, another section to construct the PDF template, and then a final section to actually send that template to Cloud Convert and turn it into a PDF. Let's start with that text header. Okay, so here we are back in shortcuts and we're going to recreate this shortcut here and we're gonna call it Make Title Banner 2. So I'm gonna give it a title, Make, oops, make Title Banner 2, and I'm going to select it uh, to be part of the share sheet so it can accept some input and the input is gonna be an image and I'm gonna remove it from the widget for now and just click done. And then what I want to do first of all is just set a variable with the image that's been passed in from the shortcut import that image. So now we have the image, we can extract the location it was shot in and we do that by the, using the get details of images action. So it's already picked the right variable and I'm gonna choose the location attributes and now we've got that. And I'm gonna set that as a variable called location. And now from the location, we need to extract two, uh, two particular variables, the longitude and the latitude, and there is a get details of locations for this as well. So we can get details of location, and we're gonna choose latitude. And we're gonna set that to a variable called lat. And then we're gonna do another get details of location. This time, longitude. It's chosen the wrong thing here, so we just need a long press on that and make sure that we choose location. And we'll add another set variable. And we're gonna choose that long. I'm gonna call that long. Okay, great. Now what we need to do is turn these into a single text banner separated by a comma, and it's really easy to do that. We just take a text object, drag this in here, and you can basically choose lat, comma, long, and that gives us a formatted text with those two variables in there. Now to test this, if, because we're expecting shortcut input, it's, it's kind of a bit messy to, to test this. We can easily just throw a dummy image in for now, so let's do that. Um, I'm gonna come here select photos i'm just going to drop that in here this is just going to temporarily change what this variable is and let's press play and see what happens right i'm going to choose that photograph there 
And okay, this is looking okay. We've just got a slight issue here, which is that we've got all these uh, decimal numbers here, which is overly precise for our purposes. What we want to do is round these numbers off so we get something a little bit more sensible. Easy to do that. If we take the round number action, I'm gonna drop it in uh, there. I want to round the latitude to the hundredths, and I want to do the same thing again for the longitude. in there to hundredths and let's play that again and see what happens choose our image why did that not work the reason being is when we dropped these round actions in it didn't actually update what was set as the value in the variables so this is something to just be a little bit wary of so we're going to long press on this select magic variable and just choose rounded number and then do the same thing here as well select magic variable and choose rounded number. So now you can see that these are all linked together. And this little line here serves to show you that you've got those actions connected. And then let's run that one final time. Okay, that's more sensible. We now have something that looks like a, a something we'd like to have in a title banner on a PDF. So that's the basic outline of the action for getting the text banner. All we need to do is just revert this change this here. So get rid of that and then long press on this to choose select magic variable and make sure we set that back to the shortcut input. I also wanna show you a little trick here that I didn't even realize was possible. Currently, this shortcut is showing up in the share sheet because we want it to accept input. What you can do though, is once you've used the shortcut input in your, uh, in your shortcut actions here, you can go back into these three dots here and you can just deselect this and this will still work. It still has access to the shortcut input variable. This is a really handy hack. And thank you to whoever it was that commented with that little uh, tidbit there. It's uh, very, very useful. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take the photograph and get the swatches from it. Let's see how that works. So here we are back in shortcuts. I'm going to build our action to extract the color palette from an image. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to start by just using select photos again for the purposes of this demo. And then set variable to be the image. So now what I want to do is use an action from Toolbox Pro that will allow us to actually extract the colors from the image. And this is the get colors from image action. So I can do that here. And this is going to get the average color. But what I want to do is just get all the colors as a dictionary. And let's just run that and see what happens. I'm going to choose that same portrait. And what we get here is we've got the average color, the primary color, the secondary color, and we've got the, the hash codes and everything. Now, let me just say at this point that Toolbox Pro is a completely free download, and I'm not sponsored at all by Alex Hay, who is the developer of Toolbox Pro. It's just something that I found that I use quite a bit. This action is not included in the free version of Toolbox Pro. You have to pay for that. The whole thing is £5.99 or $5.99 in the US to unlock. And if you're building a lot of shortcuts, it's absolutely indispensable. There are so many actions. And in the coming weeks, we'll see more and more of these. I'll also link below to a fantastic guide slash review by Federico Vitici, which shows you a lot more about Toolbox Pro in some great detail. Let's get back to the shortcut. Okay, so now we have the actual uh, colors. What we need to do now is combine this into one image that has them as kind of like vertical stripes that we're gonna use for our swatch. Really easy to do this. First thing I'm gonna do is get a repeat with each action. And I'm gonna repeat with each item in color. I'm just gonna long press on that and choose matte color. This is giving me actually an image with the whole the color as a color swatch, which is one big image with each color in that list. Alex has done a really good job of, des of designing these actions to be used in a lot of use cases. So that's what we'll get there. And I can just play this now and you'll see that again in action. If I choose my portrait, what we've got is a list of the individual colors. That's the white one that are in that image. Okay, cool. Now what I want to do is truncate these and concatenate them together into one image. So the first thing to do is to do a resize. So I'm gonna resize each of these repeat items. So each time we loop over this, we're gonna repeat, we're gonna uh, resize the image that is the repeat item. And I want this to be one, uh, 150 wide and 300 high. And then the final thing I want to do is combine these into one image, combine images like that. 
So combine the results of that, which is a list of images, and I'm going to combine them horizontally because that's how we had our swatches in the output before. And let's just try this and see what happens. So portrait is that one. There we go. We've got a little swatch palette there, which is, which is really nice and really, really powerful. Now, of course, we need to switch this back to the uh, having a shortcut input. So I'm going to delete that. Long press on this, clear that out. And we can't select anything because we've not set this in the share sheet. So you must remember to do that. Save this first. We're going to call it um, extract colors. It's just three dots there, three dots there. Show in share sheet. Images of the input type. This is kind of painful, but it does work. And then here we can now select magic variable as being the shortcut input. Okay, so we've got title banner, we've got the colors. Let's now create the template. So back in shortcuts again with a brand new shortcut. And I'm gonna have this one be the main shortcut that we use to drive this workflow. So I'm going to give it the name and I'm gonna call it PDF Maker Sunday. I'm gonna leave it as showing the widget. We don't need a share sheet, so we're kind of good to go. The first thing I want here is the select photos action again, which is gonna be our, our primary photo. Then what I want to do is get the title for that photo and get the, uh, the swatches as well. So let's call those other shortcuts and save those results as variables. So to do that, we can use the run shortcut action. Drag that in here. We have our extract colors, making sure that we're passing in the photo there. And what I actually want to do here, because that's not a particularly clever way of doing this, is drag in this variable here. I'm gonna call that the image. This way, if we change what this is, everywhere else will change. And I'm gonna clear that out and make that to be the image. And I wanna set that as a variable, which is the uh, swatch image. Okay, cool. And then I also want to run the shortcut that creates the title text. And we called that make title banner two. Okay, brilliant. And let's just make sure we're passing in the right thing, which is not the swatch image, it's actually the main image. So let's get that right. These little niggles can really <laughs> cause problems when you're trying to debug these shortcuts. So just be extra careful about what, what values you're passing into what actions. Okay, this is looking good to me. Now what we need to do is load the template text and I have that in a file in uh, iCloud. So I'm gonna do get file for that, which is this. And I don't want to show the document picker. I know that this is called template.txt. And let's just switch over to my coding app codex just to see what this template is made of. So I actually have it as an HTML file here in codex so I get the code highlighting, but you can't use the HTML file in the action and we'll see why shortly. It's very, very basic. It's got some CSS here to do the styling, but it's also got these all caps placeholders, the location, the swatch and the photo. And we're gonna insert those in the shortcut so we can use this template for multiple PDF output. Just notice as well that because we, we don't have a URL for any of the images, we're actually using a PNG base64 encoded data URL. And we have to construct those URLs and we'll see how shortly. I've just then copied this over to a TXT file. The reason I'm doing this is if in this action here, in the get file action, I tried to load an HTML, file, it creates some sort of rich text object inside shortcuts and you don't actually get access to the raw HTML text. So we can't insert the images, we can't insert the title text. It's kind of messy. Use this approach instead with a .txt extension at the end. Okay, now what we need to do is replace those placeholder variables with the actual content that we need. Before we can do that though, we need to encode the two images as base64 PNGs. Let's see how we're going to do that. So I'm back in shortcuts now and I actually have a shortcut that I've already made called PNG base64 encode. And all this does is take an image as the shortcut input. It then forces that image to be a PNG. So we get a conversion action here. This is just the inbuilt convert image action. And then we use the inbuilt encoders base64 to give us the base64 data for that image. Click done. So I'm back in the main shortcut now, and I'm just gonna call it into the base64 encode shortcut to encode the images as we need. So let's get a run shortcut action in here. We want to run PNG, base64 encode, and I'm gonna pass in, not the shortcut result, I'm gonna pass in the image, 
And what I also want to do here is I'm just going to put a comment node in here to start to break this up a little bit. And this is where we do the base 64 encoding. This can be quite useful if you have a very long, messy shortcut. Just using these comments will help you like, delineate what the sections are of your logic. Okay, so I'm going to save that into a variable. And that is encoded image. And then I'm going to get another run. Same shortcut again. And this time we want to pass in the swatch image. Let's save that as a variable. And I'm going to call that encoded swatch. Okay, so let's just see what we have here. Now we have the title banner text, which actually we should also store as a variable. So let's store that in here. Um, I'm just going to call that title text. And we then have the encoded image in base64 and the encoded swatch in base64. And it's those three values that we need to use when replacing content inside the template. Let's see how that works. So the first thing I want to do is create a dictionary with um, all of these values inside there keyed by the variables they're supposed to replace inside the template. So we can do this with a dictionary action like this. And then we know that we had a variable called the location. And that was going to be the title text. We had another variable called the image, I believe. And if you forget, we can just switch back into codex and check. So we had the swatch and the photo, not the image, the photo. And that was encoded image. Make that. And then we had another one here, which was the swatch. And we're going to call that swatch image. And I've noticed this little bug here where you've noticed the, ver the value of the location has disappeared and I can't click on it, it doesn't work. So what I'm just going to do is just change that to the location too. Add a new item down here called the location. Set that to title text and then remove that one. It's kind of a little frustration. I'm not sure if this is just an artifact of me being on the beta, but I've seen it crop up a few times now. So that's just a little workaround you can use. So now we have the dictionary. What we want to do is loop over all the keys in there and then do the replacement on the template text. Before we can do that though, what I want to do is just set a variable, which is called template to so the contents of this file. And I'm just gonna make sure that we coerce that from a file object into the raw text. So this will be raw text now, and we can start to do replacements inside there. To do this, I'm going to use a repeat with each action. So let's choose repeat with each. And what I want to do here is click on the dictionary and choose get keys. So now what I'm going to get is all the keys in this dictionary. So this will execute once for the photo, once for the swatch, and once for the location. And then what I'm going to do is just get some variables. So I want a variable which is called key to be the repeat item. So that will be each of those in order. Then I'm going to get the dictionary value for that key. And be careful here because this is set incorrectly again. So I'm just going to click on that, clear it out and make sure that it is this dictionary here. And I'm going to set that to be a variable called value. And now I'm going to use these, the key and the value to replace the content inside the template. And this is really easy because there is a built in replace text action. And I'm going to replace the key with the value in in ah, the template. Now, this is not an inline replacement, so you also have to update the template variable with the results of the replace text action. Let's click done, set variable, template. Okay, cool. So 
So that should be the finished template. What we can do is just use the quick look action to take a look and see if this is working. So I'm gonna pick up the quick look here. Click on that so it goes at the bottom. I'm gonna change that. I don't want it to be the results of this repeat. I want it to be template variable. And then let's click play and see what happens. So I'm gonna select my image. It's gonna extract the colors using the extract color shortcut we made. It's gonna make the title banner. And then it's gonna do base 64 encoder on all those images. It's gonna keep going, keep going. And then finally, we'll get the HTML content and you can scroll down. And what you're looking for is the fact that these images have now got this base 64 text in there. The title has the encoded you know, lat long in there. And this is definitely gonna be right, but it goes on forever and ever and ever because these are big images. So let's just click done. That's the template constructed now. We're in the final stretch. All we need to do is pass this template to Cloud Convert and we can create our final PDF. So before we can call into Cloud Convert, you actually need to sign up for a free Cloud Convert account. Just be clear, I'm not sponsored by Cloud Convert in any way. I'm not even really a paying customer of theirs. I just use my free account for the occasional PDF conversion. Once you've signed up, you can go into your API console and you can find your API key. And you will need this API key very shortly to be able to call into the API from shortcuts. So once you've got your API key in hand, we're ready to start calling into the Cloud Convert API. And I've segmented my shortcut for this into two parts, one to actually get hold of the API key and then one to make the API call. I actually, I do have multiple Cloud Convert shortcuts, so I like to have one that manages the API key. And I'm using Toolbox Pro's global variable support to actually store the API key, not just on my iPad, but because those variables also sync over iCloud on my iPhone as well, so it's super handy. Let's see how that shortcut works. So I actually have this shortcut pre-made and I'd like to know in the comments below if you'd like me to uh, build these shortcuts as I go or if you like seeing them pre-made or a mixture of both, let me know. This is a really simple one though. I should have a text object here at the top called, uh, which has the text CC API key. This is where I'm gonna call my global variable. I'm storing this in a local variable just to make things confusing. Then I'm using the toolbox pro check if global variable exists action to see if that exists. If it does, so if true, then do nothing, because if it already exists, I'm just gonna return the value. If it doesn't exist, then I'm gonna prompt for input using the ask for input action that's built into shortcuts, and I'm gonna set the value that the user in enters as the global variable called CC API key. And as the final thing, I just use the get value. Now, two things about this. This set and get are both in the same action in Toolbox Pro, and that action is called edit global variables. And then when you pull that action in, you get to choose set, get, get all, delete, delete all, whatever you want. The other thing to notice here is this existence here. If you notice here, it says existence as Boolean when I, cl I click on it, it's a true or false value when it comes back. However, when you first drop this check if exists action in, the return value is set as a number, which is kind of confusing. So you need to make sure that you go in by clicking on that and select as Boolean. All that will happen with this action is it will prompt if I don't have the API key. Let's see how it works. So we'll run it for the first time. And what we'll get prompted is what's the API key. So I'm just gonna enter test here, click okay. And it stored it and returned it as test. If I run it again, it won't prompt me this time. It will just return the value test. Obviously this is exactly what we want. This is fantastic. Let's now see how we can use this in an actual API call into Cloud Convert. So actually calling Cloud Convert is really simple. I have this shortcut, CC Convert to PDF. This takes the template text as shortcut input. So we're gonna pass it our template text that we saw earlier. We get the API key using the get API key shortcut we just saw. The API root that I'm using is the V1 API from Cloud Convert. So I've just got that as a text object here. And then the most important thing is this bit at the bottom. And I've got that annoying bug where you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put a nothing action at the bottom here, bring this up and then click show more. So I'm using the get contents of URL action, which is the way that you can call third party APIs. This is a post request to slash convert at the URL we saw earlier at this URL. And it requires you to pass in the API key as an authorization header with the word bearer, a space, and then the API key. And I really like this, how you can just put these variables in here, which is, which is cool. There's a whole bunch of interesting things we have to pass in. So I've chosen form as the request body type. And then I've got input format HTML, output format PDF. Great, input is actually set to upload. We've got that weird bug that we saw earlier. 
the weight is set to true, download is set to true. Together, these three variables mean that I'm gonna upload the template text as part of this request. I want to wait until the job is finished, then I want to download the result. There are other APIs in Cloud Convert that allow you to do this in an asynchronous manner, so you don't have to sit around waiting, but in shortcuts, I find this to be the easiest way. Because we are uploading, we need to set these two variables, a file name, it can be anything, I've just called it upload.html. The uh, extension seems to be important, I've, I've not had much success if I don't set that to uh, .html. Then we're passing in template as our file content. Let me just show you here, when you click on add new field, you get to choose between text and file, and you wanna choose file for this particular uh, attribute here. And then what I want is I want Cloud Convert to use the inbuilt Chrome support. So I've set this converter options, use Chrome to true, and converter options, page orientation to landscape. All of these attributes are documented on the Cloud Convert website. This is just the basics there that I think you need to make a landscape PDF from HTML using Chrome as the rendering engine. And that's it. That will just return the PDF once this has rendered. It's really quite a simple call. Now what we need to do is just drop this into our main shortcut and we can finally see the results of our work. So here I am back in our PDF Maker Sunday uh, shortcut. We know we've got our constructed template now. We have a shortcut to call into uh, Cloud Convert, let's just call that and see what happens. So I'm gonna do run shortcut. The shortcut is uh, CC Convert to PDF, that's the one we just saw, press show more. The input to this is going to be our template. Make sure you get that right. And what I want to do at the end is pop up the quick look with the return PDF, and then from there you can save it to anywhere that you want. So, Let's get the quick look action out of here, press that. So we want the show shortcut result in quick look action and the line is there that shows that this is all connected. This should be everything. Let's press play and see how it works. So I'm gonna select my portrait photo here and then all of the shortcut will start running. Now, a lot of different shortcuts are being called here. A lot of different actions are executing. What you might want to do is go back through all the places where you call run shortcut and deselect the show while running. That prevents the kind of onward details from popping up and messing up your shortcuts window. Eventually though, what will happen is the network call will be made like this and you'll see a little waiting symbol here. This means that we're waiting on the conversion to happen. Once the conversion has happened and the actual download starts, you'll see a progress bar in the background of the get contents action. Here we are with our progress bar now. So this is the PDF downloading very near the end now. And there is our PDF, fantastic. It has the lat and the long, it has the color swatch and it has our photograph. Now, obviously one of the colors here is white. So what you might want to do is put a border around that, but you can tweak the template. You can tweak all this to your heart's content. So that was obviously quite a complex workflow, quite a complex set of shortcut actions, but this is something that could be developed into a real program. I, I just wanted to build this one to show you that you can actually build real software using shortcuts. I started on this journey while I was trying to build a piece of mood board software for my wife and got into all this kind of color management and PDF creation. So you can do real things with it. I'll put links to all the shortcuts you've seen in the description below so that you can play with this at home. Please do let me know if you like these shortcuts, if you'd like to see any tweaks or any further content suggestions you have, do comment below. Otherwise, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. There is at least a video coming every Sunday about shortcuts and usually one or two in the week about other things related to Apple, laptops, iPad, and so forth. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.